Hi everybody and welcome to the section Managing Configuration Data. In this section you will learn how to efficiently manage configuration data for your application running on Kubernetes. In general, there are different ways to pass configuration data to your application. In the most simple case, you might pass configuration data as a simple environment variable. That might, for example, contain a database connection string, a log level for your logger, or any other kind of configuration value. In more complex cases, you also might want to use configuration files, like for example ini, json or yaml files, that can then be read by your application. For this first video, we are going to focus on managing environment variables for your application, and then in the next video of the section, we're going to have a look at how you can manage configuration files for your applications. If you take a look back at the second section of this course, you're going to remember that you can specify environment variables when defining a pod by using the nth property. While this does work, it often is not the most efficient way to manage configuration data. This becomes obvious when you need the same configuration value, for example, in multiple places. And this is what config maps are for. A config map is a Kubernetes resource that can contain arbitrary key value pairs. In the pod specification, you can then use the value from property when defining an environment variable to initialize that variable from a specific key stored in a config map. Using a config map to store configuration data offers a few benefits. First of all, you can edit the config map independently of the pod that is using it. Also, you can use the same config map in multiple places. This means, for example, multiple pods that are managed by different controllers even, like for example, different replica sets or stateful sets. If you have a more complex setup that uses multiple deployments and or stateful sets, config maps allow you to keep all your configuration data for your entire system in a central location, making it a lot easier to manage for you. This is how a config map is defined in YAML. Actually, there is nothing much to see here. Just as any other Kubernetes resource, a config map has a name and may have arbitrary labels. However, unlike other objects, the config map does not have a spec property, but a data property instead. The data property is just a key value map that can contain arbitrary keys with arbitrary values as long as these values are strings. Be careful when passing values like true or false or numeric values. Without quotes, these will be interpreted as Boolean or integer types in YAML, which is not supported by Kubernetes. When defining a pod, either directly or indirectly through, for example, a deployment replica set or stateful set, you can then use the value from property when defining an environment variable to initialize that variable from a specific key of a config map. Note that this config map has to actually exist when you define the pod. You can create the pod without the config map, but the pod will not start until the config map has been created. Also note that the variable value is set when the pod is started. If the config map is updated after the pod is started, you're going to need to restart the pod or have it deleted and recreated for it to receive the updated config map value. Let's have a look at an example. We're going to start by creating the very same config map shown earlier. Now let's continue by creating a pod that uses a value from that config map. In this case, we will just be using a simple Alpine Linux container, which we can then use to start an interactive shell. In this case, we're overriding the command of the container with a simple sleep command. This is just to simulate an arbitrary service, and we're just using this command that we can keep the container running while we're starting an interactive shell in it. Note that we're using some keys from the config map in this pod. So let's create that pod. And now let's start an interactive shell. When you have a look at the environment variables that are available in this pod, you will notice the sum variable 
that we have defined in the port configuration filled with the value from the config map.